South Africa is hurtling towards the election against the backdrop of a volatile political landscape. We speak to Neil De Beer of United Independent Movement, a party in the multi-party charter. Welcome, Neil. Yeah, good afternoon, Chris. You look stunning today. And to the viewers, it's D-Day approaching. <laughs> wow, Neil. The ISC has dropped a bombshell on smaller parties. Yeah, I think I think I think I can escalate that bomb to an atom bomb today. It will probably turn into nuclear tomorrow. Uh, Chris, yeah, the IEC decided three days ago to announce the cutoff date, which was about three days ago. We have until the eighth of March. In other words, they gave us eight days to complete our registrations to pay our money. That's not the problem. The problem is not the 8th of March. The problem with us, the new parties, the smaller parties, is that they are demanding 14,000 physical signatures to be signed, and they are not contemplating or giving us the right to electronically register whatsoever. Now, in my opinion, many parties, in actual fact, tens of parties are now currently on the cosh because the existing parties that are on the national platform, they do not need the signatures. So this has really been a massive shock to us. They are telling the country that we knew about this months ago. Yes, we did. But what we did also know is that that would not have been a problem if they allowed our members, the 14,000, to register electronically. They're now demanding we walk door to door and physically get 14,000 papers signed. Now, we are in a fight for our lives at this moment in time, and we are bordering on the fact to say to the IEC, in actual fact, we wrote them a letter, to say that this is a blatant attack on the democratic right of an individual to vote for a smaller party, which is the alternative to the bigger ones that have brought us here 30 years later. So yeah, tremendous earth-shattering bomb. But I can tell you, we will fight them until the last minute, one minute past five on Friday. We will fight them every step of the way. Well, Neil, some of the parties being affected by this are in the multi-party charter, as is your party. Can you give us an update on what's happening in the MPC at the moment? Yeah, well, sure, the UIM is new, Action SA is new, the SMP is new, Isalco is new, Iketu Party, we are all part of the MPC, but at this current moment, we are the new additions. To load above that more, the UIM is not a new party. The UIM was founded three years ago, and we have local government representation in three metros. So, you know, uh, what we could not understand is why the IEC would not say, well, then, worst case scenario, the parties that at least have got representation on any three levels, be it national, provincial, or local government, will be exempt, and they have not even done that. So, as part of the multi-party charter, I can tell you we've played a very political role. We are a very loud voice within that 11-party uh, alliance. And to just think that we will be exempted and thrown out because of this technicality is, I, I'm very sure, and this is echoed by the fellow MPC partners, be it the Freedom Front, be it the DA, the ICDP, uh, the IFP, which are the bigger ones, that they are very well concerned about us as well. We have put that on the MPC's table. Not that they can do something, but they have definitely echoed our sentiment. And I, I dread to think that after next week, Friday, should we not hit the 14,000 benchmark, that we will be removed from the MPC and we will not have a voice there. And I think that is truly shocking for everybody. We had a meeting last week of the MPC and in actual fact on Tuesday next week, because we are again meeting in Johannesburg, all 11 parties, to have another media conference and another update on the seventh point of our combined policy grouping. So yes, I fear that um, many of us at this current moment will be silent. If you're not, um, how do you see the MPC going forward in the next couple of months, Neil? Well, well, the MPC will continue. 
I think the MPC, the multi-party charter for South Africa, is bigger than one. You know, this is sometimes the problem we have in leadership in this country is that they think that they are the end and be all of everybody, that they are truly the Moses that need to bring the tablet and stand across the river. This is not true. Neil de Beer is but a voice. The UIM is but a voice. But we are very sure of the fact that you can take us all out. But the continued scenario of the partners in the multi-party charter will continue to fight. They will continue to remain in the alliance. And after this election, which I am wholeheartedly knowing, that we will give them a good run for their money. That is now the ANC, the Dragonian darkness of the Aina clan of the Lion Pride, that we will remove them. We do not need to be there. The UIM does not need to be present to ensure that change in this country will continue. So I'm very positive that no matter what happens to us, that the multi-party charter will remain in partnership, will remain constant, and will remain that light to change this country. Ooh this happening, where do you, do you see the ANC now? Do you think it is still possible for it to sway the election results simply by bussing in enough people to vote for, the, for them? Absolutely. I think I have now repeated it more than 20 times on national platform that the ANC does not do politics. They are preparing for logistics. And it is a sad state of an affair that a party that brought liberation to a country, not the only one, we must not forget there was people like the PAC, there was Azapu, there were many that fought, the UDF, etc. But it is a sad state of fear that after more than 115 years of existence, one of the oldest liberation movements, which I bought into as a young man in 1989, that spent more of my adult life in the ANC to bring the rainbow nation, that it has tethered today to what I will now describe the enemy of the people. They will continue to fight. They will not surrender easily. And I made it very clear, if they're not going to win this by hook, they will most definitely do this by crook. And that is the, that is the future we, we're facing at this moment, is that they have become so greedy, so power-hungry, so blatantly exhausted of this country, that they do not care anymore about anything, and that is that they would like to sit down to the last scrap of this gazelle, which them as the hyenas are killing. And that's sad, Chris, because not only does this country, if it remains under an ANC government, become a desperate affair of looting, because they know, shall they not do it this year? No doubt, in 2029, there will be no more ANC to significantly talk about. An economic genocide faces this country if we spend one more fiscal month under this ANC's governance. Now, the, the, is the radical economic transformation factions? And what growth have you seen in support for those fac factions, Neil? I think, Chris, blatantly, and I'll put this to the public, the only reason why Cyril Suki Cyril, I call him Suki, was always looking for him. Suki Cyril has called this election earlier than later because of three fundamental reasons. One, he cannot keep the lights on. He is desperately trying to solve load shedding, not for, for, for life, because while there's an ANC, there will be load shedding. He's trying to, as soon as possible, call an election so that he can keep the lights on for the next two or three months, so that they don't suffer that consequence. Make no mistake. That's the first reason he called it 29 May. The second reason is the absolute growth in the major populace of this country starting to light up and understand that under the ANC, there is no remedy and there is no future, because we are asking the problem creator to solve the problem. It's not going to happen. But here comes the bombshell. No doubt, this new MK party, which I am saying to you now, is already crossing more than 8% barrier at this moment in time in their growth. They have to stop them, because if, if the Jacob Zuma faction continues to grow, no doubt, they will surpass the 10% voter mark. Now, that will be interesting, Chris, because you will now sit 
with a brand new faction. Let's call them the third slide in the show. You will have the MPC grouping. You will have the ANC and let, let's call them friends of the ANC. Your COPE, your, um, the UDM grouping, etc. that are currently in that cabal. That vote with them on every side. And then you've got the third grouping now. This massive grey cloud now rising. And that is the RET factions of Ace Magashula's party, who is absolutely focusing on causing tantamount damage to the ANC voter, specifically in the Free State. And he's also reaching out to the Limpopo area and Gauteng. So Ace is relevant. Then the EFF, which I cluster now with this group. And then the MK party, who is now joining. Just imagine, Chris, the highlight as follows. I think the MPC, if you look at us now, and you know they say the only poll that actually counts is that at Mavericks. So let us quickly then say to each other, polls are biased. But let's, let's listen to the poll quickly. Number one, the MPC, which is now 11 parties, I can tell you we are touching, we are scratching the 40% mark. I'm telling you that. Because if you look at the DA, which in my opinion might not grow in tremendous percentages, but no doubt they will definitely net not get under 20%. They might get 22, 23. I know they're marking for higher, but let's call it the 22 mark, which they got last time. If you look at their 22, if you look at what Action SA is saying that they will surpass 8 to 10%, even more. If you look at the IFP getting their normal 4 to 5, if you look at the Freedom Front, getting the normal four. If you look at our cells that are heading between 0 0.8 and 1.5% of the vote, etc. You can calculate that we're looking at 40. That is where we are today. Now, if you go back and you look at the EFF, they will not surpass 15%. They will stay between 10 and 12. That is what we're looking at. But let's call it a base 10. So the EFF clocks in at 10. No doubt, I am telling you that the MK party will surpass 8%. So let's clock them at 10. And then you will look at these smaller factions, the Ace Magashules, the other groupings that are popping up and moving. I'm telling you, if you take their collective, you're also looking at 10. Now, this is interesting. Now we're talking interesting. Because what happens if that conglomerate makes up 35%? Tell you, this is now the cloud. Let's call them the Radical Economic Transformation Grouping. Remember, they're out of the ANC. And every one of them has declared the ANC, so does the MPC, to be removed. So the questions of coalition of EFF, ANC, MK, I do not think that's going to happen. They will fight them for governments like we will fight them. So here's the interesting thing. I'm just putting it out there. This is Neil the BSP. Not a collective, not on behalf now of the MPC. It's Neil de Beers of Beer. You will sit with a very interesting scenario. If the MPC gets between 35 and 40%, and the RET faction, which is now to the left of the ANC, if they get 35. Now the question is, will sober minds, clear minds, remove themselves from internal leftist or right politics and sit around the table with the other 35%. So the, the understanding is that if that, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, I'm just throating something. What would happen if MK, let's leave the EFF for now because that is also a sticking point at the MPC. In actual fact, our charter agreement, which is public, says that no member of the multi-party charter may form a governance alliance with the ANC whatsoever. So that is a declaration. And if you want to then make a coalition with the ANC, you have to resign and remove yourself from the MBC. But then the public will be your judge. So that is an agreement. We've got an agreement. All 11 parties signed it. So let us for one moment believe that everybody is trustworthy. 
in politics. And let us say we stick to our guns. It would then be very interesting to say that if we fall short of the 50 plus the UIM1, because remember we are plus one, we are proudly plus one, will we be able then maybe to sit around the table, take our 45, 48 or 49 percent, and then sit down and say, who do we now form coalition? Outside. That's enough. Now, we're not saying it is with the RED faction, but there are parties like Rise and Zanzi, parties like Bosa, people like Musi Mayamani, parties that are growing, who might then still, after the election, decide to form a coalition government with the NPC. So we are in very interesting times. I, I, I don't think even a pollster, an experienced pollster, could venture to try and accurately predict the outcome of this election, Neil. Can, this is you going wouldn't. To be, this is going to be like this. So, so currently, the reason why my WhatsApp groups are now being infiltrated, the reason why on technology our Facebook pages are under attack, in the past three days, Chris, they have wiped our WhatsApp groups four times from the face of the earth. Now, I'm telling you, speculation, they are currently, they, and as it is cool, fat, and I pass, they have now gone to electronic warfare. And that's obvious. I mean, if I was in that position, which I'm not, then I would have done probably the same if I looked in the dark like they do. So we must make no bones about this. This thing is going to become dirty. In actual fact, Chris, it already is dirty. And that is the sad part of politics. You know me, I'm not a politician. I entered politics to, to make a change. You can see, as we go closer to 29 May, this is going to become rough. And we have to hold on to our horses. Deals are being made. Meetings are currently being held in the most unobtrusive smaller coffee shops in this country. And my opinion, sad. Sad that this will happen. Sad that we will be sitting at tables and groveling over meat when the people of this country are hungry. Very sad. Now, Neil, if this election doesn't play out to the way uh, many people hope, um, do we still uh, have a 2026 local government elections to have another tilt at the, at the windmill? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In the mighty words of an icon of mine, Sir Winston Churchill, when he stood up and he said, we will fight them on the beaches, we will fight them on the landing grounds, we will fight them in the marshes, on the rivers and in the air. We will never, never surrender. And you can take it from this grey-bearded, half-bald individual, Akhakala Donner, Every day, every night, we will unleash thunder and lightning because we believe that this country is worth every penny, every drop of blood, every minute. Because we are Africans. Africa is a tough country. And at this current moment, we ask that this country's people rise. Rise with attitude. Van vandag sit hulle nog En hulle weet nie, wat ons weet nie. So no, Chris, it's not going to end. If we lose this one, the barons of 2026 will be the next battleground that we can go because we are fighting for the heart, the soul, and yes, the restoration of a magnificent country. But more than that, a beautiful people because that's what South Africans are. Thank you. That was Neil Tapia of the United Independent Movement, a party in the multi-party charter, speaking to Biz News about the latest developments in the run-up to the election. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, Chris. And let us continue every day. <laughs>